Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for Microsoft Excel. This screencast covers section 8.3 Chi-squared goodness of fit test for one sample. The Chi-squared goodness of fit test works on count data and asks if the distribution of counts between three or more categories is what you would have expected. It is obvious therefore that we have to inform the program as to what we would expect for the number of cases we would find in each category. We do this by telling the program the proportion of the sample we would expect to fall in each category expressed as a fraction. For example, in column 2 of this table, we see the breakdown of the number of households in Worcester City in terms of the number of dependent children within them. City councils often need such data to plan expenditure for the future, and one of the questions that can be asked is if Worcester is typical of England and Wales in general. While the figures from England and Wales are given in column 3, and in column 4 we can express this number as a fraction that gives the proportion of the cases in each group. In column 5 we express this fraction as a decimal. These are our expected proportions. We can now use the proportions given in column 5 to allow the program to calculate expected values so we can test the hypothesis that there is no difference between the distribution of dependent children in households in Worcester compared to the expected distribution found in England and Wales. So let's do the test in Excel. Unfortunately, Excel cannot use the expected proportions directly, but requires us to calculate the expected number of cases for each category. You can see I have set up a separate column called expected number of cases. To do this, I select the cell, in this case for the category with no dependent children in the household. I type equals into the box to let Excel know that it's going to receive a mathematical expression. I click on the cell containing the relevant proportion. I'm now going to add the multiplication symbol and then press on the cell containing the total. I now track up and press the green tick. This is the number of cases we would expect. I now do this for the rest of the categories. To do the chi-square test, I do not use the data pack, but use the chi-test formula. To do that, I select the square where I want the significance to be placed and select it. I'm pressing equals. I will now type the name of the test, which is chi-test open brackets. It now requires the range of the actual number of cases we have determined. In this case, this range here, followed by a comma, and then the range of the expected number of cases, which in this case are these values here. I complete the mathematical equation with a bracket and press the green tick. As you can see, it has given us a probability value of 2.866 times 10 to the minus 5. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. Thus, this small probability suggests we can reject the null hypothesis and that there is a significant difference between the number of dependent children in households in the city of Worcester compared to the expected number of children derived from data for the whole of England and Wales. What if you do not know what the expected values or proportions are? Then the default position is to expect the same number of cases in each category. This data taken from table 8.1 shows the number of counts of holly leaf miners at three adjacent height zones on holly trees. There is no prior expectation of what we should find, so in this case we assume that we should find equal numbers in each zone. That is, since we have three categories, we would expect a third of the insects to be found in each zone. So let's do the chi-squared test in Excel when we don't know the proportions for our expected values. In this case, we use the average value of the categories as the expected value. To calculate this, we do it as follows. We select the cell we want to put the average value in, press the equal sign to tell Excel that we're going to input a mathematical formula, type in average followed by a bracket, and then select the range of numbers we want to average, in this case the counts of the three categories. We finish off the mathematical formula with a bracket and press the green tick sign to tell Excel that we have the formula correct. The answer is 57. And this will be the same expected value for all the other categories. So, let's do the test. I'm going to place the significance result here. Again, I press equals to tell Excel I'm going to put in a mathematical formula. This is the chi-test. I then open a bracket. 
we put the range of observed values in first, followed by a comma, and then the range of expected values second, finish off the mathematical formula with a bracket. We now confirm to Excel this is correct by pressing the green tick. In this case, we get a significance of 1.735 times 10 to the minus 4. This is an extremely significant value. We can therefore conclude that there is a highly significant difference between the number of holly leaf miners found in the different height zones on the tree. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test, or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.